On by Vinter. Seems to have recovered Gordon McQueen. Stapleton. Swings it to the other side to Moses. Duxbury is also forward in this attack. Number two. White side coming to the near side. Still on the side, and here's Moses. And that's a foul by Thomas. Taken quickly, Wilkins. And he gets the return, Ray Wilkins. And he scored from there with his left foot on on two occasions, notably the FA Cup final. But this time, not accurate. It was a quality movement, though, and a reminder to Oxford United just who they're up against. It was beautifully done, Stapleton involved, but Wilkins wouldn't be pleased with that. Begins for Oxford to Lawrence. Thomas is pushed into the centre forward position. And that's who they tried to find. The door was shut. On Andy Thomas. Stapleton's flick, white side. Oh, white side. Penalised for the challenge on Thomas, who got it in the face. White side uses his arms like that, quite liberally at times. And too long for Vinter, but an awkward clearance for Moran. An easier one for Duxbury. White side needs support. Stapleton. Briggs. Duxbury takes the kick. Moses. Wilkins. And Vinter. Oh, referee pulled the play back because Biggins had been fouled. Be pleased about that in a way because Vinter looked to have the advantage. Briggs is up there. Hughes was a bit slow. Hinshaw would. And don't be surprised to see a shot from him. Last season with Crystal Palace, he scored nine goals, including two in the Milk Cup. And he's always been able to strike the ball well from distance. A little bit of uh, concentration lacking, I think, there in the Manchester United ranks. Uh, Stapleton was defending, and you'll see Hughes hesitate there. And in came Hinshelwood with rather more determination. Spots it again and books him. Only 18, but he's been in so many big matches. He's almost become a man before he was a boy in a football sense. And he's certainly a very physical player.
up goes Morin. But so too does Shaw. Handball. Kevin Morin. And this could spell danger for Manchester United. If Brock sets his side from here, Gary Bailey will need to make sure the wall is right with five men in it. And Lawrence must make the supporters wish that Brock had taken it after all. Total waste. and he's found Stapleton, this is dangerous, and Robson just wide. And the England captain, who in an attacking sense has had a quiet match, comes from nowhere again and threatens to get the decisive goal. So dangerous when he attacks that 18-yard line, Bobby McDonald was in front of him, and the shot went past the post. From Brian Robson. there to Oxford and this is Hughes Robson's forward again Stapleton and Wilkins to shoot such a good two-footed player is Ray Wilkins there are players even of international standard who favour one side predominantly but he doesn't mind whether it's right or left The left has been uh, prominent in recent Ray Wilkins' efforts. And that one fizzed across the face of the goal. Robson, well taken down. He's becoming a dominating force now. Stapleton tries to push it back into it. McQueen, who'd slipped just before that, didn't get his balance. Free kick. Moran was committed. I thought there was some backing on him more, but the verdict went against him. So after a tidy little spell by Manchester United, Oxford come thrusting forward again, backed by their army of supporters. Now Will Brock try a shot this time. Certainly on. But the wall holds firm. Thomas. Andy Thomas, the youngest player in the Oxford team. Still only 20. Oxford are wanting to make a substitution. Jones, 22-year-old midfield player, will come on, and the man coming off is Steve Biggins, who was down with a tummy bug earlier in the week. 15 minutes to go as Oxford make the change, and I just wonder whether Andy Thomas will go and play up front with Mick Vinter and allow Jones to come into the midfield. It looks that way. Against Briggs. 